Nosevuel Mapisa Nakula has resigned as National Assembly Speaker as well as Member of Parliament with immediate effect. It comes a day after the High Court in Pretoria dismissed her urgent bid to halt her imminent arrest with costs. She's accused of receiving over 2 million rand in bribes from contractors in exchange for tenders during her time as Defence Minister. Mabisa Ngagula says her departure is in no way an admission of guilt. Now the sources telling Newsroom Africa earlier that she will hand herself over to the police in Centurion at around 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, her party, the ANC, says they welcome her resignation and value her commitment to maintain the image and reputation of the organization. All right, let's uh, continue to get reaction now and we we'll speak to uh, the main opposition in Parliament, Democratic Alliance, represented by Ms. Seviwe uh, Kwahube, including the IFP's Chief Whip, Mr. Narend Singh. To both of you, thank you very much for your time. Can I start with you, Ms. Kwahube? Your reaction as the Democratic Alliance, you have been pushing for this moment to come. Good evening, uh, Colleen. Good evening to your viewers. Um, of course, we welcome the resignation of Ms. Mapisa Ngagula. We have, uh, as you said, long called for her resignation because we were always of the view that uh, somebody who holds si such a high office, such as the Speaker of the National Assembly, should not be facing allegations of this serious nature. And so we, we had hoped that she would have resigned a lot earlier in order to really, you know, retain the um, or at least you know try to uphold the the reputation of the institution of parliament because as lawmakers we are entrusted with holding the executive to account but when one of our own is accused of such of money laundering and uh, and, and, and corruption, then, you know, we should be able to be beyond reproach. However, now this also has an implication on the motion of no confidence that I had tabled against uh, Ms. Mapisa Ngagula last week, that it will now fall away. Um, and ultimately, this was the intention, clearly, to have her removed from the position of the Speaker of the National Assembly. And the ethics complaint that relates to this matter will also fall away. But I do want to bring to your attention that I have also uh, laid a complaint against Ms. Mapisa Magola with the Powers and Privileges Committee, which will be looking at a matter which relates to the hiking of the salary of the Secretary to Parliament by over 70%. And that has no bearing on the fact that she's no longer a member of Parliament. That will continue because um, if she is found to have been in contravention of the Powers and Privileges Act, she can be charged criminally as an ordinary citizen. And so we think that it's important for accountability that we pursue all the allegations that have uh, been leveled against her, and we call upon law enforcement to do the same. Mr. Singh, the IFP's reaction? Yeah, no, no, thank you, Mr. Ngambi, and good evening to your viewers. Uh, I think you would recall in an interview a week or two ago, I said there's no smoke without fire but we gave the Honourable Speaker the benefit of the doubt and we wanted justice to take its course. And I said an honourable thing for her to do would be to step aside while the investigation was continuing. And quite prophetically yesterday I said, well, it will be not too far away that we will see her resigning on her own. We welcome the fact that she's resigned. It will allow the investigation to continue unhindered and without the investigators knowing that she's holding a high office or even though she's stepped aside. And we want uh, the law to take its course irrespective of who the individual is. And this is something we always believed in as the IFP, that whoever the individual, whatever office, the law must take its course and nobody is above the law. Ms. Kwahube, Parliament's reputation as a house of laws, um, it has been a very difficult road, particularly uh, post the State Capture Commission of Inquiry. I will not repeat what the Chief Justice Raymond Zondo had to say as chair of that Commission of Inquiry. Where does this live, leave rather the image of Parliament when the person who leads this august house resigns under such circumstances? 
Look, Polly, I mean, this, this, is, this is not good news. And, uh, and perhaps maybe um, some people, particularly in her political party, may be uh, viewing this as, you know, so almost a victory for the opposition. And I find that difficult to understand because ultimately the speaker was the head of the institution that we all belong to. So this is, this is not good news at all. But relating the matter back to the Zonda Commission and particularly the findings of that commission, Parliament's reputation has not been in a good way. And I would venture to say that Parliament has been systemically hollowed out for the past decade and a half, where its ability to hold government to account, its ability to demand a lot more from uh, government to to ask the difficult questions, to hold people to account, to hold people before its own processes has been hampered. And instead, it has been essentially dominated by members of the ANC who would routinely protect their own. And even many people would, would started asking, what's the point of moving a motion of no confidence? Because the ANC will likely vote to protect her. And so that's been kind of the, uh, the, the reputation that this institution has had, and which is deeply unfortunate because, Polly, a, a, a parliament is meant to be the refuge of, then the last absolute refuge for the people of South Africa. It's not meant to be a place of comfort for those who steal and rob the public purse. And yet it has been allowed to do that. And so I hope this is the beginning of uh, the changing of culture of accountability where we can start to see that political leaders are held to a higher standard and must be because they've taken an oath to serve and to serve the people. And they are the public servants and not the other way around. And so really we have a long work and a lot of work to do actually in the seventh parliament in firstly making sure that the recommendations of the Zondo Commission are implemented. Because you will remember I had a, we have been fighting the institution because there hasn't really been any meaningful change. And state capture 2.0 can easily happen even after the Zondo Commission which cost us billions of rands. And so really there has to be a lot of work that we have to do to change the culture in this institution so that people can have faith that their parliament works for them and not the other way around. Mr. Singh, as we wind down this interview, she came into the position of speaker in August of 2021. How would you rate her performance? Is there any legacy to speak of that she lives behind in parliament or perhaps should we speak and look back at her legacy as defense minister perhaps well maybe maybe i i should look at the time uh, when she was defense minister and as i said on a previous broadcast that as the ifp we did not support her ascendancy uh, Speaker of Parliament, because she, we believed as the IFP, and so did Prince Botelezi at the time, that she made a real faux pas when it came to addressing the situation of the unrest in 2022, where Prince Botelezi had uh, suggested that the army be called out to protect the citizens and protect life and property, and as uh, she said, well, there's nothing wrong, and uh, 24 hours later, all mayhem broke loose. So at that time, we were not uh, confident that she could do the job of a speaker. But I must say that uh, in the role as speaker, she has done well. She has been fair. She's been impartial. And I think she has uh, respected that office to the extent that it should be. But it's a very sad day for Parliament as an institution that uh, we have to undergo uh, this kind of challenge, uh, you know, just uh, a few weeks before Parliament's arises for the sixth parliament. To both of you, let me thank you very much for your time. Naren Singh is the chief whip of the IFP in parliament and Sivue Kwahube, the chief whip of the main opposition Democratic Alliance.